Hello my little loves and welcome back to the Urban Butchery channel with me Franco Machelayo. Now as you can see I've got a lovely cup of tea in my hand and I'm just kicking back after a hard day's graft. But just relating to a hard day's graft is what our next video is about and that is to butcher a spring lamb. And this particular video was done in a live butchery environment so there is a lot of background noise so what I'm going to do I'm going to actually do some commentary just to give you guys an explanation as into what I'm actually doing. I hope you enjoy the video and what can I say apart from bottoms up, heads down, let's crack on. The tools that we need to actually butcher this lamb is a uh, butcher's steel, a steak knife, a saw and a boning knife. The actual lamb in question uh, is a spring lamb, um, it's a pulled dorset, pulled dorset cross and that's uh, actually crossed with a beltex. Uh, beltex are generally quite muscular so this is quite a big lamb really, it's probably roughly about five months old, something like that. So anyway, let's get on with the uh, the butchery. So, the first step is to remove the shoulders. We're actually going to break the lamb into primals first, so we're going to remove the shoulders. What I'm actually doing now is just marking between the sixth and the seventh rib, and then I'm turning the lamb round, and then I'm going to count the ribs on the other side as well. It's always best to count on both sides. It's very easy to go between the 6th and 7th on one side and the 7th and 8th or the 5th and 6th on the other side. So what I'm doing now, I'm just cutting down the shoulder and matching the cut on the underneath. Now I'm taking the butcher's saw and I'm just sawing through the sternum. And now I'm sawing through the base of the shoulder, through the spine. So now I'm just scraping off any bone dust that might be on the meat. And as you can see from this lamb, it's quite a well fed one. Uh, there's quite a lot of creamy fat on that, which will add to the taste. So now I'm left with the loin and the leg. So now I'm just putting my knife into the vertebrae. And that will give me a marker to separate the legs from the loin and the saddle end. So I'm just using the steak knife for this because it's a bit of a uh, bigger cut. Making sure that my lines match underneath. So now I'm taking the saw. And just sawing through the vertebrae. Steak knife again. And then we cut through. Again. Scrape the face of the meat, make sure there's no debris, no bone dust. Also, don't forget to do the loin side as well. I mean, look at the fat on that, it's unbelievable. For a five month old lamb, anyway, that's been really well fed. But, like I said, it will eat beautiful. This. So, now we've got the kidneys there. So, we're just removing the kidneys and taking away the uh, fat on the inside of that as well. Any heavy fat, that won't go to waste. We'll just put that to one side. Just deal with that while it's in front of us. So the next step, we're gonna remove the breasts. So normally it's three fingers from the, um, from the spine. I didn't do that with my fingers at that point. So that's one breast, and then we'll turn it over. Just making sure I get this absolutely right. And then we'll saw through that breast. Take the bony knife and cut through. And there's your breast put to one side. I'm just kidding. There's a little bit of uh, liver left in there from the slaughtering process. So we'll just remove that. Then we'll carry on removing any excess fat. A little bit of diaphragm there, but like I said, none of that will go to waste. Just move that bit of skirt there, a bit more fat. Now, for this lamb, for the specification uh, that I've been given, we're leaving the actual loin hole, so we won't be doing any chops with that. So, here we're just removing the kidney or kidneys. 
So we'll take them, put that to one side. Just have a little general clean up, keep your block tights and tidy. And there's your kidneys. So they're ready for sale now. So now we go on to the legs. So we've got a pair of legs here. Now we're going to have to split right the way down through the middle here and through the H ball because obviously the hips work independently. So I'm really taking my time with that and you'll see with the knife and then I should be able to get through there. There you see I've split straight through the middle. So now I'm going to saw these in half. There is a red line going down the inside of that tail though. You can't really see it from this point. I'm following the red line and that's generally right down the middle. So I just saw them. Look at the fat, wow. Clean the bones again, make sure there's no bone dust. So I'll take one leg at a time now. So just taking that bit of belly skirt out there, off the end. That can go for dye slam a bit later on. A little bit of excess fat off there. And we'll take that off. The actual customer I'm doing this for uh, requires the, for there to be as much fat left on the leg as possible. So now we're removing the chumps or the lamb rumps, whatever you wish to call them. So I'm just sawing through the bone, through the tailbone, and then cutting those off. So we've got a nice straight leg. The specification for this as well is to cut them tight to the leg as well. So now we remove the tail. A little bit of edge maintenance. See how gentle I do that? That's all you need to do. So just remove that uh, spider muscle. Maybe it's called a spider muscle on the lamb. And then we'll cut through the tendon and then we'll saw the end of the leg off. And just cut through that. So now we're going to take away the H-bone. So I'm just following that H-bone round with the point of my knife, nice and gentle. Watching where I'm cutting. And now I'm going through the joint, through the bone socket joint, and just following round that bone. So a quick look at it, make sure it's right to throw in the bin. That's gone. A little bit of excess fat to be removed. And now to the customer specification, we're going to leave it bone in and we're just going to put four strings around it just to hold it in place, ready for cooking. So we're using the butcher's knot here. I think this is butcher's knot number two in the Urban Butchery Butcher's Knot Quadrilogy. So if you'd like to check that out, this is a great knot. The Urban Butchery Speed Knot. So like I say, it's four strings on this one. Just making sure that the strings are evenly distanced apart or equidistant. And the knots are in line as well for presentation. So like I said at the beginning of the, uh, the video, there's lots of different ways of uh, preparing lamb. Um, this is this particular customer's, customer's specification, so that's what we're going by. So now we're going to bone the lamb rump out, or the chump. So I'm just going down the side of the fillet there. Now I'm cutting through that little vertebrae. A lot of people just bone the whole thing out in one go, but I like to take that small vertebrae out. So we're just going to pull that away from the meat, like so. Just pop that in the pan. So now we're going to break through the oyster bone. There's a small line of cartilage that you look for. And then you cut upwards with your knife. And then that releases the top part of the oyster bone plus the tail. Just a little bit of trimming there, just to make sure we don't throw anything away. Just a bit more trimming. So now we're going down the oyster bone. You can hear my knife scraping on the bone there. That's what I like to hear. That tells me that I'm very close to the bone and that I'm leaving the meat with the meat. So that's that removed. 
And now I'm just going to take a little bit of excess fat off this, not too much because the customer wants as much fat left with the cuts as possible. So we just trim that little bit off and cut through. A little bit more trimming until I'm happy with it. And then put it to one side for later on. So now we've gone to the shoulders. So we've got a pair of shoulders here. So what I'm going to do first is a little bit of edge maintenance again. Nice and gentle. See how gentle that is? Metal on metal is bad. So nice and gentle. So now I'm cutting down the back of the spine and right the way through to the end of the neck. Now a lot of people will take the neck off and do neck rings, but this particular customer wants to maximise his um, lamb neck fillers. So I'm just going along the top of the vertebrae now and I'm feeling those rib bones with the point of my knife. And I'm pulling at the same time with my left hand. And we'll go along the other side as well. Now of course you could saw this shoulder in half if you wish and just do them separate. It's entirely up to you. So that's it, nice and clear. So now we're going on to the neck bone part. We'll just remove that elastic band. We really should have done that right at the beginning. So I'm just releasing some of that chine meat just on the neck there. And then I'm working my way along with the point of my knife right to the end and away the shoulder comes. We'll do exactly the same on the other side now. And of course these bones will be trimmed up a little bit later on. So we maximise on all the meat. We just pull that to one side for the moment. I put the shoulders to one side. So we're going to bone and roll this shoulder. A bit more edge maintenance. It's really important to maintain the edge of your knife as much as possible. So now we're just taking what they call the paddy whack out or the tape. This yellow sinew type uh, thing is what helps to uh, bring the lamb's neck up. So now we're going along the neck fillets. Just breaking down into the seam there and pulling them away. Excellent for stews, curries. Beautiful, beautiful piece of meat. Full of marbling. So we're just removing the excess fat just off the edge of that shoulder now. And there's some more excess fat. Now I'm going to trim this quite heavily because the customer requires the rolled shoulders to be quite lean on the inside. There's nothing worse than cutting into a rolled shoulder after you've cooked it and you've got a big load of fat in the middle of it. Or as an old butcher used to call it, an old bit of guff. So I just carry on trimming this now. A bit more edge maintenance. The knife I'm using, by the way, is a 5 inch Victorinox curved with a red handle. They do come in various colours, various coloured handles. So then I just brought through the joint of the blade bone. And I'm just working my way down the blade bone there with the tip of my knife. And if you watch closely, I just cut the top of that blade bone, then flip my knife around and use the back of the knife because you get inside of the, um, there's like some connective tissue where you can actually cut through and get the back of your knife underneath it. And that means that you can have a really nice clean bone, as you can see there. Now I'm going to pull this one out. You can debone this one if you wish. So we just left a tiny little slit of meat on there, so we just clean that off. That little bit of for uh, lamb mince bit later on. Not to forget that cartilage at the bottom of the blade. So now I'm going to tunnel, tunnel bone this bone. So I'm just working my way around the ball joint with the point of my knife. Sorry if my head gets in the way there. I'm just keeping really close to that bone so I I minimise the, the cuts that I'm doing inside of the bit more edge maintenance. So now we're going down the foreshank. Of 
course you could take the four shank off if you wish and um, cut that like a, a normal lamb shank just following that bone gone through the joint and off it comes so now I'm going to tunnel the other side of uh, this bone again keeping to the bone and scrape down nice clean bone so now we're going to check it for bone chips, blood meat, gristle, excess fat anything which would spoil your eating experience now this is an interesting piece of fat we can actually pull this out but you've got to be very careful when going underneath it because uh, the skin lies directly underneath it and you can put a hole in that and once you've tied the shoulder up and you've got a hole in it it just looks quite untidy so you just got to be really careful there again excess fat again blood meat there bit more fat that I wasn't happy with there and as you can see it's really leaned up quite nicely quite a muscular animal just a little bit of extra fat there I wasn't happy with and now we've just run our fingers up that blade bone just to make sure where the blade bone came out just to make sure there's no bits of um, bone left in there just straighten up that end of the neck just cut that excess fat off the end there I wouldn't normally do that but with this it's quite a fatty lamp so so now we're going to tuck the uh, four shank meat inside of the shoulder some people do this some people don't do this um, this particular customer wants this to be done and then we roll it over so now we're going to tie this up We've got a really nice shape there. Wasn't happy with a little bit there. The butcher's always looking, always vigilant, making sure that the customer gets the best possible piece of meat. So now we're back to the urban butchery speed knot. Nice and tight there. So I'm doing these strings roughly about three quarters of an inch apart. You can put them closer if you wish. Although you can overdo it. And it can look seriously untidy. I was working at one, um, one butchery in Truro in Cornwall um, where they insisted on putting 21 strings on one top side which I thought was ridiculous. This is roughly about right. So again, those strings nice and tight. So once that um, shoulder goes back into the fridge, it'll set up really nicely. Then if we have to slice any of this off here, as in cut it into two joints, three joints, it'll hold really well. And re hold really well during the cooking process as well. So we're just finishing this off now. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've probably got about eight strings on this in total. I mean, the reason why I'm showing you this video, I just thought it would be interesting for you to actually see um, the butcher at work in his uh, normal habitat, shall we say. So I've got it pretty even all the way across and then I'm just adding another string across the middle of it which will just bring it all together and it also looks quite nice as well I think. Now getting rid of all the strings, very important. So that's your shoulder of lamb, and that's your leg, and there's your lamb rump or your chump, there's your neck fillet. Just getting this straight for you. And there's your loin. 
of lung. Bones, you breast of lung. So there you go guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Let's get back to that wild guy in the green t-shirt. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I uh, did making it. Um, if you did, then please press the uh, subscribe button. Also press the uh, bell icon, which will notify you of any future videos that come up. And I'll catch you next time on the Urban Butchery Channel. Skills for life. <laughs>